Hi guys, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are. I pray that you're having a wonderful day and, and enjoying this beautiful weather or um, the weather wherever you are. Um, today, today's sermon is going to be a a bit personal for me. I'm going to get really real in this sermon. Um, because I think as a future minister of the gospel, I think um, being transparent is really important. Um, I was talking, uh, the sermon is called The Paradox of leadership. Um, I was talking to the Lord last night about where he's taking me and what it's costing me and and the loneliness and um, the lack of uh, relationship and the whole feeling of not feeling good enough for the call in which he called me to. Um, and he said to me, Rachel, you're not alone. Other people have felt this as well. He said, every leader that you look at, look up to on TV um, or on the internet, every leader has gone through some form of this. Um, it's all about not not letting it consume you, feeling the loneliness, feeling whatever, but still going on with purpose. And I said, Lord, what, what do you mean? Um, he said, he said, don't you think I felt lonely when my three best friends when I, when I was going through the most difficult part of my life, when I was about to head to the cross, um, and they couldn't wait for me for an hour, I just asked them to wait for me for an hour, and my one best friend denied that he even knew me. And and he said, I felt like that too. So you're not the only one who feels the weight of everything and the weight of the ministry I've put in you and the, the total gravity of what I've put in you. And you're not the only one, Rachel, he said, that the devil is fighting. He, he told me to just be strong and understand that whatever I'm fighting now, whatever devils are, are are attacking me now, they'll be for it'll be for his use later. Because whatever is attacking me now, it will be a ministry to people later. Because because, like Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. So, whatever I'm feeling, whatever loneliness I'm feeling, whatever friendlessness I'm feeling, whatever frustration about being single at, at 35 I'm feeling, it's all for a purpose. And I just wanted to tell you today, even if you're not in leadership, Everything you're going through, he's felt it. And sometimes switching over to leadership, whether it be church leadership, whether it be business leadership, whether it be your boss, whether it be your mother, whether it be your father, whether it be your sister, whatever leadership it is, there's a paradox because on one hand, you have this awesome responsibility 
and you love it, you love um, the task, you love your job, you love pastoring, you love leading that business, you love, you love giving advice, you love the adrenaline, you love whatever comes along with that job. But along with all the things that are beneficial, along with the lives that are being changed, along with the business strategies you're coming up with, there is this tremendous uh, loneliness. There is this tremendous thing, um, this tremendous burden on you that sometimes, no matter how many friends you have around you, no matter how many mentors you have around you, if you have no people or if you have a lot of people, you still can't let it out. Because I know for me, even though I have um, my friends around me, there are parts of me that are still being worked on and sometimes I'm afraid to let those parts of me go because to let those parts of me show, to let those broken parts show because I'm afraid that people won't respond well if they know um, this broken parts of me. I'm, I'm working on it, but it's still a challenge. And sometimes with leadership, you give so much of yourself away that you just want a part for yourself. You have so many people pulling on you. Or if you don't have so many people pulling on you, on you yet, you, you, you see, like with me, I'm not a pastor yet, but I see what's coming. I, I don't know how fast it's going to come. I don't know when it's going to break up. But I see what's coming. And, I, and I've and i seen other leaders go through it. And, and sometimes I'm like, God, I don't want this. But he's saying, the world needs to hear your ministry. The world needs to hear what I've put in you. And you've got to move forward. And... And in, in the knowledge that I will never let you go. And sometimes um, he's been talking a lot to me about leadership. Sometimes there are things spiritually with pastors that God reveals to you and you don't know how to say it to whoever. So you could have a mentor, you could have your mother, you could have your your husband or your wife, but it's so vast, but it's so unbelievable what God's speaking to you is you don't know how to say it. It's almost, it almost cannot be uttered. The things he shows me at night when I go to sleep, I'm like, wow, I, I, I don't even know. Uh, what what to make of that and sometimes sometimes it's hard to turn your brain even off as a leader because you're always thinking and you're always thinking and you're always thinking and thoughts and creativity and stuff and ministry and business ideas are coming to your mind um so that's the stuff of leaders so if you have a leader in your life, whether it be a pastor or a business leader, and you think they have everything together, you think they have no problems because they're pastor so-and-so, they're business leader so-and-so, um, it's, it's, it's not always the case. Um, Usually, they have so much inside of them that they can't explain that it is so hard for them to really, um, really communicate that to anyone. And the other thing about leadership that is lonely, too, is that 
sometimes when you get around people, you can't talk about the stuff that it's showing that God is showing you. you and if you do the other side you can't talk about the things you struggle with so it is very hard to because if you talk about the things you struggle with people tend to think you're less of a Christ like some people tend to think you're less of a per um, you're less powerful as a leader because I remember uh, one time I by accident uh, swore in public um, I have this issue with my mouth which I'm working on but I by accident swore in public and I just finished telling the person that I I went to Bible college and blah 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 and they said how could you swear when you have gone to Bible college when you're a Christian and some sometimes you can't depending on what person who you are you can't as a leader share who you are with everybody and sometimes it's hard to know who you can share with so you end up no matter how much you let out to your spouse or no matter how much you let out to your friends there are a thousand things that you're keeping to yourself because you first of all for me it's not about people accepting me it's because the world has such a, a skewed view of Christianity I don't want them to see me as a hypocrite and blame God for, you know, oh, that person is a Christian and they're acting like that. Listen, the only difference between you and me is, is that I know Jesus. I know no matter how I screw up, no matter how I... Um, no matter how I um, am in my life, I, ha I have Jesus to fall back on. I have Jesus who loves me. That's the only difference between Christians and non-Christians. We, we're not perfect. We deal with the same sex stuff that you do. We deal with the same gossiping spirits that, we, that you do. We deal with the same things. But the only thing is, we know that we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And the cross is for everybody. The cross is just not for one specific person. The cross is made for everybody. And he wants you to know today, like he's telling me, telling me that no matter what, what flaws you have, he can use you and no matter what no matter what where he's taking you the tools that he's developing in you now he's going to use because everything you think that is is wrong about you or is a detriment to you he's going to use it for his glory He's going to use it for your ministry. He's going to use it for your story. Everything you're going through now, he's going to use. And I would say, if you know any leaders, no matter how, no matter if it's your boss at work, if it's your pastor at church, or if it's whatever, even if it's your mom, pray for them because there are, there are major battles that leaders fight that, that that sometimes they don't even know how to express and I'm not saying that just for me I'm just making people aware that it's it's a fight to be a leader and it's it's very lonely because when people know that you're a certain kind of leader they're not themselves in that view they're afraid to show who they really are like 
Like, they're like, oh my gosh, you're this. I can't do this. And it makes you feel very, like, you're an outcast. Like, um, you're kind of, you just want to be apart. But the Lord would say to you as leaders, I don't want you to be apart. I want you to be separate. I want you to go against the grain. I want you to change the culture. And not only secular culture. He's saying to some of us, I want you, he's saying to some of us who will be pastors, he's saying, I don't want you to start another church. There are a lot of churches. He said, I want you to start a movement. So those a movement that will change this generation and all this stuff that you're going through, all this heartbreak, all the loneliness, all the wondering why you're still single, all of it is for because he's starting a movement in you that will change the this generation a movement is something it it's like a certain a certain a certain space and time where he's changing the whole dynamic of the world it's a certain it's a certain place and time where he's changing the whole dynamic of the world that's a movement. So through you, he's he's getting ready to start a movement. You are getting ready to start a movement in your workplace. You are getting ready to start a movement in your home. You are getting ready to start a movement even in your church. Um, through you, he's going to change the trajectory of how the world sees the church. He's going to change the trajectory of how the world sees your particular industry. God's light is going to speak to you. He's going to give you new ideas. He's going to give you himself in a new way. All we have to do is just be open. And all of this thing that he's... He's... Um, speaking to us every lonely night every time when our co our co-workers don't accept us because we're Christians or people will say oh you can't say that you're a pastor or you're a Christian all of that is just because the world has a skewed view of Christianity and we've made it that way. What happened is there were people way back when who 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 acted like they were so perfect and so great and the world has this view that Christians should be like that. Like perfect and not say anything bad and not not do anything bad. Look we're human. The only thing different about us is we know Jesus. And, and we are covered by his blood and his grace. That's the only thing different about us. We go through the same stuff that you do. But Jesus, Jesus came to restore us. Jesus came to restore the world. And he's ready to restore those who will receive him. So all those times that you're feeling left out, that you're not a part of the club at work, that, that your co-workers um, make fun of you because of your stance on certain things or say, oh, you're too, you're too this and you're too that. Don't worry about it. God's got a plan. Whatever you're going through, God's got a plan for it. And he's going to use you in that place to create a movement. He's going to use you to, to speak into those children's lives so that they can live a life of destiny and purpose.
And I think that God is getting ready, like I said this last week, that God is getting ready to do something that he's never done before. And that he's getting ready to reveal himself in ways that he's never um, said before. And you see, the I, I believe the world is going through a shaking that that has never happened before and it and it does and I believe it has very little to do with the coming of Christ um, and more to do with what God is go going to do in the earth I believe that he's going to restore the world back to himself um, not so much in a heavenly way but in an earthly way because because that was his the purpose of his death to restore the world back to its original intention um, and I think he is um, preparing his church to go through that I believe the church is going through a shaking um, because he's preparing us for something that we have never seen before. And I think that he is, he is speaking to those who he can. So I would suggest to the church, keep your ears to the ground. Don't worry about the chatter. Don't worry about even your issues. Don't worry about the stuff that you can't control. Focus on this move that he is bringing because I believe that this move is shaking the world and the church. I believe that God is going to start ministering through people in uncommon ways. I believe that uncommon ministries, uncommon things, are going to arise through uncommon people. I believe the church um, that we have been, the way we have been doing that is about to take a drastic shift. And I believe that we need to be ready for this shift. Um, I believe that God is separating the Joker ministries from the men and women of God who are willing to sell out for the Lord and I believe that I believe that um, pastors and preachers are going to come in all shapes and sizes um, I was saying this to myself the other day I was saying I wish that preachers in jeans and t-shirts would would um, come alongside side um, preachers that wear three piece suits because I think the reason why God has made different kinds of preachers for different kinds of people his word is the same but preachers personalities are different and God needs people to speak to different people like so a, a preacher can speak to me and they will not resonate with you and vice versa. I don't, I don't think um, it's a fad. I think it's more the Lord needs different people for different, um, for different callings because Jesus will do anything for his gospel to be released and I think that the Lord is just going to raise up uncommon ministries uncommon people like I said last week and I believe that he is now speaking to people um, to launch out in un uncommon ways I believe that he's giving people dreams that they 
that they have never seen before. I, I believe that there are people all over the world that are not sleeping because the Lord's just pop popping this idea and this ministry and this business for this industry into people's heads because it's uncommon ministries uh, that he's using. I think of the problem with the Bible is we think it's so sanctimonious and pious because we we don't know anything about um, the time where Jesus lived. But um, if you go back to the time where Jesus lived, um, the Jews of the day were were um, they were different sectors of Jews that believed the Messiah would come in different ways, and they were they were very pious and very religious. And when Jesus came in a manger as a baby, and all of this. He he broke the he broke the molds, um, and I think Jesus was literally a little hellraiser. He he upset everything that they said was the synagogue. He he upset every norm. He upset everything, and that's why he was um, crucified because they didn't know what to do with him. And I think the time of Jesus is going to come around again. In that I think that there are people, a remnant of people that are born to upset the way the, the world is operating. And even to upset the way the church is operating. To go against the grain to preach his word in and out of season. And those people are going to, going to, or are already experiencing tremendous um, pushback from the devil and from themselves. It's not only from the devil that we, um, that we have tremendous um, spiritual warfare it's from ourselves and it's mostly from ourselves we say we see something and we say oh can God do this through me oh I'm to this there's no way that God can do this and we don't understand that by saying that we're shooting ourselves in the foot and God told me something the other day he said, um, it's none of your business how I'm going to do it. You just have to know that I will, will do it. And it's none of your bit. He said, you don't have to agree that you're qualified. You just have to step out and do it. So whether you, ag whether you agree or, or not, whether you think you are or not, all you have to do is step out and do it. So, what you think of yourself, he said to me, what you think of yourself, what you think you can do, in my name is irrelevant. All you have to do is step out and do it. You don't have to agree that you have uh, the material or the know-how. All you need to do is step out and do it. And so that's what I'm about to do. Um, I will give you more information on what exactly the Lord is doing in my life uh, very soon. Um, I, will, I will see you next week. I can feel the winds turning, I can feel the winds are changing, and whatever God is going to do to his remnant, it's going to be something that the world has never seen.
people will come to Christ in droves because of this uncommon favor and uncommon ministry that the Lord's got going on. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that I can't wait to see what you are doing through your people. And I pray, Lord God, for your leaders that are feeling that they're alone, that they're feeling that they're displaced, that they're feeling that um, that people don't want them, that people just want their gifts, Lord God. I pray that you'll send people to them, Lord God. I pray that you'll send people that they can be real with, that they can be not only the Christian part of them, that they can be the person I pray that they don't lose the person in the pastor. Lord God, and I pray that you'll feed every person and every leader, God. I pray that you'll, you'll saturate them with your grace and your mercy and your love. Show them, give them your strength and show them your love like never before. Pour into them, Lord Jesus. Pour into them, Holy Spirit. Teach them, not only for their sermons, Lord God, but because quite often, oh, when you're a pastor, you're, too, you're so busy um, looking for scriptures for sermons that you forget to feed yourself. But Lord, I declare that you'll feed every leader. I pray that you'll saturate every leader with your Holy Ghost. And Lord Jesus, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, God. And I pray that you'll keep them strong. Oh God, I pray that the, that the spirit of wanting to give up, Lord Jesus, is n not there, Lord God. You've called them for a reason. You called them for, for your people. You gave that uncommon ministry for a reason, God, Lord Jesus. And I declare that they are not going to give up. I declare that this word will make them stronger, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord Jesus. Set their face like flint, Lord Jesus, to, to do your bidding and to, and to proclaim your word in season and out of season, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll shut the mouth of every naysayer, Lord Jesus, Lord God, shut the mouth of every devil online, oh God, that will, that will, that will seek to use words to destroy and tear down, Lord God, build them up, build them up, Lord Jesus, send a rescue for those leaders who need a rescue, send joy for those leaders who need joy, send relief for those people, send relaxation for those leaders that need a rest. Send joy for those people who need, for those leaders who need joy. Send peace for those people who need peace, Lord God. Send strategy, send strategy for those people who need strategy. Oh God, I declare that divine strategy is coming to your leaders right now. Lord God, I declare divine strategy coming, oh God. Divine strategy is coming, oh God. Divine strategy, oh God. Don't give up, pastor. Don't give up, elder. Don't give up, mother. Don't give up, father. Strategy and help is coming. I declare, oh God, that you'll open the eyes of their congregation, that you'll open the eyes of their children, that you'll open the eyes of their wives, oh God. Oh God, and, and I declare that those people around them that are closest to them will see that they need help and have the divine strategy to help them. Send mentors to leaders who don't have mentors, Lord God. Send people to leaders who, who are by themselves, oh God. Let them know that they're not alone. Let them know that there are brothers and sisters around the world that need them. Fill them now with your spirit. Fill them now with your glory, Lord God. Let your glory fill their temple, Lord God. 
overflow in their mouths, oh God. Lift their head. Lift every heart. Lift every spirit, oh God. I praise you, God. Lord God, and I and I lift you up, oh God. Feed us, Lord God. Feed us, Lord God. Feed your people. Lord God, when we're dry, Lord God, feed us. Fill us now in the name of Jesus. Fill every empty spirit, every man, woman, boy, and girl, Lord God, listening to me, Lord God. Fill us, fill us, fill us in the name of Jesus. Speak so clearly, Lord God. Speak with precision, Lord God. Speak from your pulpits, Lord God, with precision and clarity, Lord God. Send your word like never before. Let your word pierce and be sharper than any two-edged sword, O oh God. Let your word be bread to the hungry. Let your word be water to the thirsty, O oh God. Fill our wells, O oh God, with your word, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen the weary heart, O oh God. Strengthen the weary soul, O oh God. Strengthen, strengthen our minds, oh God. Release your power. We need your power in every church, oh God. We need your power in every house, oh God. Send your spirit like never before. Send an axe anointing, oh God, on your house, oh God. Send unity, oh God. Send your, send your word, oh God, like never before. Send strategies to your house, strategies to get the world before it's too late, oh God. The world needs you, God. Send help, oh God. We need new strategy, oh God. Give us new oil. Where we're running dry, Lord God, give us new oil. We need new oil, oh God. We need new oil, oh God. We need your oil, Lord God. We need your fresh wind, oh God. Holy Spirit, blow from the north, south, east, west. Blow on us. Blow on us strategy. Blow on us joy. Blow on us peace. Flood our spirits with intention, Lord God. Flood our spirits with intention, O oh God. Make us intentional in our ministry, O oh God. Renew our intention, O oh God. Any dead ministries that have lost their way, O oh God, renew that fire, O oh God. Renew our intention, O oh God. And our intention is that your glory be felt over all the earth, oh God. Renew our intention, oh God. Renew our intention. For all those ministries who have lost their way, oh God. Renew our intention. Renew our intention. Speak, Lord. There is a sweet anointing in this Oh,
So guys, I will see you next week. Have a wonderful day. And remember, God is right there to heal and restore and deliver. We are not alone. All you need to do is reach out for him. He's there right now. And he's ready to meet all your needs. And he's ready to fill you to overflowing. Just ask him. God bless you. And keep you. Until next week. Bye. And God bless.